Welcome back, Devils fans. It is your host, Ace, here on Running With The Devils, where we are bringing you New Jersey Devils news, rumors, conversations all year long, and I'm here to talk about an exciting little nugget that came out of Frank Saravalli's daily face-off show just yesterday. Tom Fitzgerald is looking to do it big this summer, my friends, and by big, I mean really big. If you're a Devils fan and always looking for news and things of that nature, please hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, share it with a Devils fan friend who might enjoy the videos. Thank you very much. Help us get out to more people and open up opportunities for all of us into the future. And let's take a look at what Mr. Saravalli had to say regarding Tom Fitzgerald and the New Jersey Devils. All right, uh, let's do our summer ahead preview for today. It's about the New Jersey Devils, Frank, another team that is looking to get into the playoffs next year. That is not a team who's going to just sit back and say, yeah, we'll trust the process a little bit. They hire Sheldon Keefe. They got some moves they need to make, though. We know and we've talked a lot about they need to get a goalie. They're going to get a goalie. But what else is on the list for Tom Fitzgerald? Oh, oh, oh where do we start? <laughs> I had a GM message me yesterday and say, hey, the New Jersey Devils are looking for a Top six forward, bottom six forward, top four defenseman, bottom pair defenseman, and a goalie. And then they said, and a partridge and a pear tree. Yeah. Like, and they've already made a coaching change. Where do you start? And look, this is a good team. Yep. I'm telling you, we just mentioned Stuart Skinner, 900 save percentage. If the New Jersey Devils are anywhere in the world of 900 next season, stone cold, mortal lock playoff team. They might win the division. They could. <laughs> They have that much talent. Yeah. You just need a little luck with the health department along the Dougie, way. Too. Losing Dougie Hamilton was Dougie massive. Hamilton, Jack Hughes for chunks of the yep. year again. And it's like, those are two humongous pieces to take out of your lineup. It's easy to forget that before he went down the first time, Jack Hughes was the Hart Trophy front runner. He was leading the league in scoring by a wide margin. He was like basically scoring a goal a game. It was insane the run that Hughes was on before he got hurt. So they have the forward core. They've got young defensemen, so they need some veteran D help. Mm -hmm. But you've got it. Tom Fitzgerald hasn't been able to solve the goalie issue at any point so far in his tenure yeah. in, in New Jersey. Mackenzie Blackwood, he wasn't it. I really like the Jake Allen trade. I think whoever they bring in to have Allen play 30 games is going to be perfect. But you've got to find a difference maker in net. Yeah. With that spot Allen's in as well, like if you can get that difference maker, you actually do have the chance to go from brutal goaltending to like, Maybe one of the best tandems in the league if you land a Markstrom, Soros, Allmark, go down the list. So. And Allen at 1.9 million bucks just makes all the sense yep. in the world, which is why I was saying all along, I can't believe they didn't trade for him sooner when the Habs were running three goalies all year and definitely in the mood to make a move. Why didn't you try and stabilize the position earlier to give yourself a chance? It would have cost you the same, mm -hmm. and you could have had a lot more runway. When I saw this clip, I was invigorated and excited, and my God. We all knew, going back to about a week ago, there was a quote from Fitzy somewhere that said something along the lines of he was looking for a goalie, which we already all knew, and then some help up front and on the back end. So at a minimum to me, and I said in a previous video, at a minimum that means we're looking for a goalie, a defenseman, and a forward. Three key pieces in the summer could dramatically help improve the roster. And I also said that I wanted a little more than that, if possible. And now Tom Fitzgerald has told another GM that he is looking for five, count them, five pieces. Five pieces this summer. And those pieces consist of a top six forward, a bottom six forward, a top four D-man, a bottom four D-man, and of course the elusive goaltender. To me, it's very exciting because it shows that Tom Fitzgerald realizes this team needs a lot of help, unfortunately, and we're not going to get it done with the roster as constructed. So it's a lot here to unpack from that video. So let's just start at the top regarding a top four D-man and a bottom four D-man, you know, to bring two defensemen either through free agency or a trade that obviously means that some guys got to be going bye-bye. And when I analyze the defensive group as a whole, we have locked in, cemented in for the season, Dougie Hamilton, Luke Hughes, and Shimo Nemitz. Three absolute studs, or at least studs in the making, which would leave the group of Kevin Ball, Jonas Siegenthaler, and John Marino all on that bubble position where to bring in two defensemen, two of those three guys got to go. So whether it's Marino and Siegenthaler, 
um, Siegenthaler and Ball, any combination there out of those three, two of them got to go. So if, if Fitzgerald's really looking to do this, we may not see two out of the three of John Marino, Jonas Siegenthaler, Kevin Ball. Two of those three must go and be upgraded via free agency or in a trade, and I would love to see it. Me personally, I wanted to at least give Kevin Ball one more season. He is young. He is a big body. He is huge. And if he could develop into that nasty defenseman and work on his game a little bit, I think he could be a key piece. I love size. I love physicality. He has the size. We haven't seen much of the physicality, but I think that could kind of be taught over time. So if it was up to me, you know, if we're bringing in two new defensemen, I would be of the mindset that Marino and Siegenthaler got to be the guys to go. But you don't always have the luxury of being able to move exactly what you want. And so if we are trying to bring in two defensemen, we got to get rid of two. And Ball might be one of the guys that has to be sent elsewhere to get this done. But I do think two veteran and preferably nasty and physical defensemen would really help out the team overall. We saw last year how many games where the, the defense was just non-existent. I mean, and that starts with the forwards being a little more defensively responsible as well. But our defense was just so porous last year. We gave up so many odd man rushes, breakaways, not cleaning up the garbage in front of the net, allowing rebound goals, guys to get in our goalie's face and, and deflections, and it can't stand. That needs to be cleaned up. And last year the goalies obviously sucked as well. So when you have a porous defense and goalies playing at league-worst levels, it's a combination for disaster. We dug ourselves a deep hole early, and we never could get out of it. So I would love to see two defensemen. That would be a dream to me. You know, you guys all know I love Zadorov. There's a bunch of other guys available in free agency that I'd like as well. My in-depth free agency wish list video will be coming out in about a week or so. I'm, I've been working on it. There's a lot of a lot of guys I like, a lot of guys that I would I would think fit the team really well for where we are now. And so, you know, hopefully Fitz could bring some of these boys home. But, yeah, in terms of defense, if we're bringing two in, two got to go, and those are the most logical ones. And then we get to the forwards. A top six forward and a bottom six forward. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, you know, the forward group, by and large, we have the talent there. Last year, a lot of guys underperformed. We did a lot of line shuffling. We obviously had all the injuries. And so the forward group, you know, needs a little tweaking as well. I would have settled for one player if that's all we could get, but now Fitz is setting the mark for two, and I love it. That was going back to a few weeks ago. My personal wish list was a goalie two forwards and two defensemen. And it was, you know, for a total of five pieces, a lot of people told me I was crazy. And I did say that I realized this is super ambitious to get five pieces in an offseason. But it looks like Fitz is right there as well. And so when we move to the forwards, you guys know there's tons of guys out there that I've talked about, tons of guys in free agency. Uh, at the top of my list, obviously, is Brady Kachuk. Probably never happening. I'm not going to waste too much time on that. But I would certainly, before making any of these other moves, Make a really last-minute desperation pitch. Very, very intriguing package to make it really hard for Ottawa to say no. I would try that before doing anything else. I would shoot I would shoot for the moon, baby. Try to bring Kachuk in. Probably fail, and they say, well, we're going to wait it out. Okay, fine. We'll have to revisit this next summer after they miss the playoffs again and Brady wants out. So moving on from Brady Kachuk, what is more realistic? Then, as a lot of you know now, my top want, should he reach free agency, would be Steven Stamkos. Not too often a guy's as decorated as him become available, and I think he really would lift the locker room in a major way. This guy's done it all, seen it all, winner. Absolute winner, would love Stammer, but he might not reach free agency either, and so you have to look at more realistic pieces, and they're out there, and they're out there in free agency, and you never know what will come along in a trade, but Stammer would definitely be at the top of my list should he become available July 1. But there's, there's a lot of guys, especially bottom six guys, uh, available in free agency that I think wouldn't be too difficult to obtain by opening up the old wallet and 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 spending for him. But I, I would like to see some size, and I would like to see some physicality. As all of you who have been watching me know, I've complained for months and months and months that the team is undersized and they just can't play to the physical level that they need to. Now, the regular season is one thing, and we got beaten and battered all season long during the regular season. But for anyone who has watched the playoffs, you realize that it's a complete war. Complete and utter warfare on the nightly, and this team is not built to withstand that. And so I do think two rough-and-tumble type dudes in this roster can make a huge difference. And again, I do think toughness to some extent can be taught. 
at least to raise your level of toughness, but certain guys are just never going to have that complete dog that you want to see in, in guys like Tyler Bertuzzi. That's another guy I'd mentioned previously that I would be interested in potentially on what his salary demands would be. And I think Sheldon Keefe will obviously play a major role in whether we choose to pursue him or not. Obviously, they had a very close working relationship while Keefe was in Toronto. So that's a kind of interesting subplot to see if Keefe urges Fitzgerald to go after him. But there's a few other guys there as well. And I don't think there's any shortage of guys to bring in. There really isn't. The question remains, you know, what are you going to send out salary-wise to make some of these deals work? And there are potentials. Obviously, when talking about the forward group, and it'll be very difficult to do, but Andre Palat, I love Palat, but he obviously has not lived up to his $6 million a year contract. And is that something you might be able to move with or without retention, depending on the rest of the deal, to another team that he might be a better fit on? It's hard. It'll probably be a very hard one for the Devils to get done no matter what. And a few of you had um, thrown out using Palat in a potential trade to get Patrick Line. I mean, listen, that would be that would be a great scenario because it's essentially trading one bad contract for another. I'm not saying to do it straight up, but if they were the main pieces of the trade, you know, maybe something like that could be explored. Um, you know, potentially line A, the 10th pick, I'm sure Columbus would be very interested in as well. Uh, I would try not to have to use that in a trade, but if it came down to it and they were willing to, you know, retain on line A and maybe some other pieces, picks, whatever it is, I would certainly consider it. And I do think, you know, I've, I talked about this the other day, and I've been thinking about it ever since. I do think Patrick Line is a gamble I personally would take. Normally, I would say, no, screw that guy. He's nuts. He's injury riddled and blah, blah, blah. But when you look at when he's on top of his game and healthy, the guy is basically a point-per-game player. They don't grow on trees, and he's a sniper. I do think he would fit in beautifully with Jack, and I think a change of scenery coming to New Jersey, you know, let's be honest. Who, want, who wanted to play in, you know, Columbus and Winnipeg? Like, they're just not, you know, great NHL cities to be in. Let's be real. Not to, like, slander them, but it's just not. Come to the tri-state area, live in New Jersey, and be with a young group of hungry guys trying to win a cup. I feel like it could be the perfect mixture for Line A to turn his career around and return to the beast that he was years ago. I mean, I remember when he first came in the league, people were talking – that he was a top five player in the league. Like, don't forget that. I, I understand that was years ago. But the guy has an absolute shot. He could be a power play weapon. And I think he could be the perfect guy for Jack's wing. I don't know. I don't want to get too caught up in that. But I certainly hope Fitzgerald is at least inquiring to see where their head is at with what they're hoping to get. Because I do think you could definitely get him at a discount. And I'm a gambler by nature in a lot of situations. This is one that I would take a gamble on assuming he passes his physical and all the things that, you know, he's not damaged goods because that has been a concern, and that's fair. I mean, injury-riddled guys a lot of times could just never stay healthy, and it kind of plagues them their whole career before they inevitably retire. Hopefully that's not the case here, and hopefully he could be a productive member of the New Jersey Devils next season. Would love to see Line here. And, um, you know, and then we get to the goalie, obviously. This has just been a complete debacle. Um I'm firmly over Olmark. It's just going to cost a lot in trade and, and to pay him six million bucks or so, maybe even a little more per year on a, on a somewhat long-term deal. He's just, he's just not proven to me. He, he's flopped in the playoffs. And so for me, that is a gamble I would not take. I, I won't be livid if Fitzgerald does it and we somehow get Olmark. I, I'd be excited that you know we improved our goaltending situation. But that's a gamble that I personally would not take just because of the cost overall in both assets and money. And that's why I really liked the Markstrom situation. I really liked Markstrom for the two-year stopgap period before one of the kids could come, come up and take over. But it seems like Conroy is just becoming the biggest joke of NHL executives in the past few years. I mean, this deal got blown last year. Looks like he's blowing it again this year. People are saying the Leafs are in on Markstrom. They really want him. I want Markstrom, but I 100% am not overpaying for him. And so... You know, if they're asking for the 10th, I'm sorry. I am just not interested in giving you the 10th overall for Markstrom. I will gladly go sign Bressois and free agency, who will cost less per year and cost us zero assets. Zero assets to sign a guy in free agency. And you could make the argument that Bressois could, potentially could, play better than Markstrom next year. That's a real possibility. I would obviously rather have Markstrom. He's more tested, been around a lot longer. 
and I just think he's a better goalie right now overall. But, you know, I, I'd be perfectly happy with Brassois. And so at some point, the Markstrom thing has to either happen or not. It seems like it's getting dragged out. The draft is less than two weeks away. I'm perfectly okay with telling Conroy to go kick rocks and move on to the next potential goalie for this New Jersey Devils club. For me, it's Brassois and free agency. But depending on who strikes out on Allmark or Markstrom, they might be competition for Brassois as well. So it all gets interesting. You know, there's probably going to be maybe five or six teams looking for goalies, and there's really not many. Uh, I don't think Soros is going anywhere just yet. I mean, that could happen too. I'm certainly not interested in paying the King's ransom for him either. I do like Soros, but again, to to give up a ton of pieces to bring him here and then sign him eventually to an $8 million plus deal, I just don't like it personally. And I'm willing to do the Markstrom or Brassois couple year period and then bring one of the kids up like I'd mentioned in the previous video we have five kids in the minor leagues one of them has to hit Akira Schmid Nico Dawes Isaac Poulter Jacob Malik Tyler Brennan one of those five guys has to be able to step up in a few years and if they don't get a whole new scouting department because you can't whiff on five goalies it just doesn't make sense and so I'm, I'm still perfectly fine with the Markstrom thing assuming it comes at a reasonable price and to clarify I'm not against using the number 10 pick to get Markstrom I just am not giving it straight up for Markstrom. That is lunacy to me. But if it's going to look something like, you know, a, a rumor was out there, the 10th overall for Markstrom with retention and their 28th pick, like something like that, I could I could wrap my head around. That's perfectly fine for me. But in no planet am I giving them that pick straight up for Markstrom. That is complete lunacy. And then the, the reports of a top pick and a, and a prospect. I mean, what does Conroy think Markstrom is? He's, he's acting like he's trying to trade like Marty Brodeur in his prime. Like, what, what do you think you're getting for this guy? For two years, it makes no sense, but maybe Toronto will make a desperation move in an effort to kind of, you know, calm the shitstorm that has been their team for the past few seasons. They got Barube there now behind the bench. Maybe they look to make a splash with a goaltender and, and maybe some of the forwards as well. You know, who knows? Time will tell on that. Um, and then we move on to one of the comments Saravelli said at the end I thought was very telling, and it's not to – I don't want to keep beating the, the proverbial dead horse, but he did say something along the lines of, you know, Fitzgerald sat by and did nothing all year long while goaltending sank the New Jersey Devils. And then he goes out and gets two guys on trade deadline day. And he said something like, you know, Mar Montreal is running three goalies all year. Like, how could you not get him here? And that was that's been my stance from the whole time. I know there was that story out there that, like, we tried to get him and he, he refused to come here. It just doesn't make sense. And that, to me, is the single biggest reason why I currently am just furious with Fitzgerald and think he's terrible. Um, he could gain some points back in my book with a productive offseason in which some sweeping changes are made. But there is no excuse to not have gotten a goalie all last season when we were just drowning because of league worst goaltending and everyone in the, on the planet knew it. There was no reason for Allen not to come here earlier and possibly have salvaged the season. You know, with that being said, seeing how the playoffs played out, I do believe the only playoff team we would have easily beaten was the Washington Capitals because they certainly looked like the worst team to ever make the playoffs. I mean, that was almost a first-round buy for the New York Rangers. They just completely dismantled them. But still, again, I've said this time and time again as well, I will always prefer to make the playoffs than to not make the playoffs. Making the playoffs and going through that, those grueling wars is a completely necessary step in teams looking to win the Cup. You know, very rarely do teams come out of nowhere – and win the cup. The The Tampa Bay Lightning had some of their playoff woes before they finally went on to win it all. And you see it often, you know, even look this year, obviously the Panthers are a stacked and incredible team, but they made it to the finals last year. And it's no mistake or fluke that they made it again this year. And they're one win away from sweeping their way to a Stanley cup. So playoff experience and going through that whole thing as a unit, as a group learning, it's all part of the process. And so, for me, make not making the playoffs is a huge step backwards. I always prefer to make the playoffs. And Saravelli also went on to say that with even 900 save percentage goaltending, which is like the definition of mediocre, even with mediocre goaltending, we are basically a lock to make the playoffs, which I agree with. And they also went on to say that they wouldn't be shocked if we won the division. Now, tons of people are going to say that's lunacy and – um complete pipe dreams but the reality is and I've said this time and time again over the past few months as well is that the New Jersey Devils next season should look much closer 
to the 2022-2023 team that set the franchise record in points with 112 and went on to beat the Rangers in a seven-game series before we got smacked by Carolina. But by and large, the key pieces of that group is still here. So for people now, just with recency bias, to look back at the shitty season we had last year where we were injury-plagued and our goalies just fell off a cliff, we're not a garbage team. And for people, you know, you have to really look back and be like, okay, you know, last year was a complete curse season. It really was. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. All the injuries, the whole McLeod thing, our goalies just tanking. Fine. Throw it away. But – to believe that the team next year will be closer to that team we saw this season versus the one we saw the year before is a, is a complete fallacy. Is a complete fallacy. We lost some some depth pieces like Tatar and Wood, obviously, on defense, Severson and Graves. But there's just no excuse. There is no excuse for us not to return to be a team that will compete for a Stanley Cup. And a lot of you will think that's delusional. If Tom Fitzgerald gets those five pieces that he's looking for this offseason, I, I, next season will be the most anticipated season for me in years and years because now we went out, we got guys to hopefully push us over the hump, and I think our roster, as is right now, while it needs work, the core is there, guys. We have great players. Now we just need to put it all together. And not that this means too much, but the betting lines for next season for Stanley Cup champion have come out. And there are only eight teams that are more favored to win the Stanley Cup than the New Jersey Devils. Those teams are the Stars, Panthers, Oilers, Avalanche, Hurricanes, Rangers, Golden Knights, and Maple Leafs. We are the ninth most favored team to win the 2025 Stanley Cup. I mean, that should tell you something. Vegas isn't a bunch of idiots. The lines makers are very, very good at their job. And right now, with no moves being made whatsoever, we are in the ninth slot as far as Stanley Cup favorites. So, you know, last season, I believe we were going into the season, we were like fourth. Um, and obviously a very disappointing season. But Vegas has us at ninth right now at plus 1,800. Bet $100 to win 1,800 on the Devils winning the Cup. I'll probably put some – maybe I'll do a video on that too. I'll probably put in some – some futures bets for next season before we start getting all these guys because as we start improving the roster, I think this is probably going to shift downward some. At plus 1,800, you know, we'll throw – we'll sprinkle we'll sprinkle a little action on that. But let me know what you guys think about all this. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Fitzgerald making the announcement, or, or maybe it wasn't meant to be an announcement, but he said it in conversation, which then became an announcement on Sarah Valley show. Five pieces. Five pieces. Two forwards, two D, and a goaltender. If he pulls it off, it'd be phenomenal, but some pieces are going to have to go out. Some pieces are going to have to go out, and two defensemen certainly would be on the move, and some salary is going to have to be figured out as well. And maybe we still do make a, a big splash on, you know, Olmark or something. I mean, and depending on who the guys are, I really think we could be a contender. Call me crazy. Call me crazy, but I, I really do like our core group, and with those right little tweaks – to the roster, I think we could be right there. I really do. There's no reason why we couldn't be. Why not us? So let me know in the comments what you think about Fitzgerald divulging the five-piece plan. What are your guys' current thoughts about this whole goalie debacle? Throw some players out there that you guys would like. Some of you have in previous conversations. But there's tons of guys, if you look at the free agency list, tons of guys I would love to have. I will give the spoiler alert for my free agency wish list. My number one guy is Zadorov. That's not going to change. And there's tons of other guys I like as well, both forwards and defensemen. That'll be coming out. Look for that in the next probably week or so. Uh, be an extensive look into the guys I would love to see on the team. But throw it all out there in the comments. The goaltending saga continues. We're less than two weeks away from the draft. And it's an interesting time. An interesting time, but I am somewhat excited by Fitzgerald saying that. Because for you to say that, it seems like there's going to be some action. There's going to be some action. Talking and doing are two different things. But if he delivers on his five pieces that he's looking for, woof, what a summer it will be. Talk to you all soon. Throw everything out there in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Until next time, friends, let's go Devils.